Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Long, and with me, as always, is my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, and gunner, Jacoby Gloth. How are you doing today, Jacoby? I'm doing all right. All right. That's, I wish that's that was good. my name. That'd be a cooler name. That would be. That'd be a very and cool Jake. name. Yeah. Jacoby. It's just Jake. Jacoby. Uh, do you... Uh, have you had a good week? Uh, it's been all right. Have you read or it, You know, anything? it would have been better if I knew what pitch you were going to have this, oh, today. Well, this pitch is... Uh, now, the name is under consideration, but uh, I think we're going for alliteration with this one. So right now, it's Nemesis Negotiation, or Negotiating okay. for My Nemesis. Does, I'm not not married to Nemesis Negotiation or even the NN uh, alliteration, but I do think it should be alliterative uh, title. And it follows the story of Dr. Machina, a genius chemist, engineer, and inventor with a very warped moral compass, living in a villain retirement home slash prison. Oh. Uh, he has resigned himself to living in this prison, uh, slash retirement home for the rest of his days. It's it's basically a Is giant. He old? He's very old. Uh, uh, all the okay. main characters of the show are pretty old, and he is you oh, know, yeah. he's sassy. He's a bit of a prick. He's uh you know sarcastic and grumpy, self-loathing, cruel, uh, and hateful. But he's also kind to children, uh, and he is living in this home with a bunch of other retired supervillains who you know they can't supervillain anymore, but the government doesn't just want to put them down because a that's immoral and b they probably have you know the supervillains have access to information and technology that the government might want to have the ability to call on so they're keeping them alive basically yeah like uh like in batman you know exactly you know they, they, there's no death penalty or whatever so yeah exactly just there they should just kill the joker it makes so much more sense just firing squad him or whatever Nope. And he was an evil supervillain, right? Back in the day. And his arch nemesis was Professor Neuron, a Harvard accredited educator, educator, and expert educator. on all things related to genetic manipulation. He's a sweet and caring, uh, and he always sees the best in people. He is currently working nice. in a small liberal arts college in the Midwest, and he's, and he's plugging away at his screenplay, you know? So what, wow. I, what I'm doing with this this universe is they're just kind of... The, the superheroes and supervillains of the past have just kind of moved on to be normal old people, you know? Yeah, the, uh, the superhero there is really successful. He's a professor, he was a superhero, and he's writing a screen. He's working or, uh, on his screenplay, screenplay. yeah. He's, he's, he's decided, you know what? I did the mad science... I did the super science game for a while, right? I, I did my inventions. I was a Reed richards it, right? But, uh, you know, I'm kind of out of it. I don't want to do that stuff anymore. So I'm just going to move out. I'm going to teach, you know, chemistry or whatever at this uni that uh, will, you know, pay me enough to live there. And I'm, I look good on their uh, rap sheet because I'm a fucking superhero. And I'll just work on my screen. Yeah. I'm, I'll work on my screenplay. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll start episode one first episode the pilot if you would but this is more of a a limited series so i have s five episodes written down but each episode will probably be about an hour long right oh yeah a premium television limited series that's what we're going here so that's what we like to see dr machina is living boring existence at the nursing home and a morning montage plays of him waking up, he gets out of bed, he puts on his, you know, his little shitty bathrobe and his slippers, he brushes his teeth, he gets annoyed at his his nurse and all this stuff. And then we just cut to him sitting in a reclining chair in the home with all the other people. And he's grumpily, like, flipping through the channels on the television. When he sees news story, breaking news, Dr. Neuron has been kidnapped from his home in Montana. <gasps> oh. What's, what is this? And in the news story, the anchor talks about Dr. Neuron's greatest arch rival, the Necroconjurer. 
and oh, and, and it's not this guy. It's Damn. yeah, exactly. Doctor Machina is not happy to hear that he he you know was not mentioned as Professor Neuron's greatest rival because you know Doc always thought of himself as you know Professor Neuron's the two sides of the same coin that 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 you know yeah that trope right so he's like mm-hmm. what I I am Professor Neuron's greatest rival and I'll prove this by finding him. I'll save him from whatever monstrous organization or criminal has captured him because only I, Dr. Machina, can destroy Professor Neuron once and for all. And so uh, he escapes from the place rather easily because he is a super genius. So he, you know, has a bunch of hidden technology in in his room that he's just been keeping there. I want it to be very obvious that he's choosing to stay. You know? Yeah. He's not uh, He's not being forced. He's like, oh, I have nothing better to do, so I'll just stay here. And so he escapes uh, from the uh, home, and he goes to one of his many secret hideouts. Right? Because he has... The escape should be really lackluster, but, like, he's trying to make it cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's got like a gun hidden under his bed and he like aims it at the guard. He's like, show me the exit. And the guard's like, oh, hey, um, Dr. Makina, are we going out for a walk today? And he's like, you know, come on, fool. We need to go now. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to. I don't want any funny games. And he's like, all right, we'll take you on your walk, Dr. Makina. And they like go outside. And they're like hanging out outside. And he's like showing them ar- like, you know, bringing them around. Yeah. Dr. Mackey is like, oh, bring me to the wall. Bring me to the wall. And he's like, oh, well, we can go check out the flowers outside if you want. But we can go see a play or a store on the bus today. And he's <laughs> it's like, it's like, like super like, you know, uh, nice retirement home. Yeah, exactly. And then Dr. Mackey just like shoots him in the foot and runs away because, you know, he's a, he's a villain. He's a prick. Uh, yeah. So that's that's how Dr. Mackey's story for this episode ends. Cut to Professor Neuron wakes up on a mysterious desert island in the middle of the Pacific. It's this, you know, tropical paradise, very much a James Bond villain style situation. And he finds himself in an enormous lab surrounded by dozens of other scientists that have, that have gone missing in the past couple of weeks. Ooh, what is this? He is being forced to work on a project that he abandoned decades prior because he didn't think that he could make it work. It's called the Trojan Horse. That's 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 what it's called. T H P. The Trojan. Everybody nailed that a couple centuries ago, Charles. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but uh, I couldn't think of a better name. And the project is f- focused solely around extra-dimensional pr- experiments. You know, creating small pocket dimensions, right? That's that's what the project is about. So we get a little bit of an exposition dump of him talking oh. and being like, "Oh, what what are we gonna do here?" And then the final, and then he's like, ah, "I'm incensed, but I, you know, I have to work on this project or they'll kill my family." So he starts working on the project, uh, you know, after the threats of a mysterious benefactor that we don't see. And the, the episode ends with Dr. Machina making it into one of his secret labs that he has hidden in uh, in and around the dusty. entire country. You know, he's got a bunch of <laughs> labs that are just... Is this a comedic show? It's 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 supposed to be vaguely comedic, but it's also... A, it's There's a bit of a mystery element to it. There's going to be some cool action okay. later. But episode one is really just setting everything up. You know? This might not fit, but it'd be funny if he got to his lab and it was turned into like one of those cooperative workplaces. <laughs> it would you be. You know, like a WeWork or something like that. Yeah, he that gets there be. and there's like, there's fucking like 80 other people there working on like all their weird different companies. Oh God. He just has, he just. And he only has like this small cubicle in the corner that he can go to. I, it probably doesn't fit. But no, I think that would be good. See. I was thinking about maybe he goes to one of his labs and it's being demolished and it's been turned into like a rave spot because they're underground, all the labs. Yeah. Uh, it's just like a <laughs> raver spot. he has to spot. go to his lab and it's like 
It, it's like there's a huge party up ahead and he can't focus. Ugh, God, uh, fine. Uh, he just like, he hits a special button and everything in the lab freezes over, including all of the people are partying and he just leaves. Yeah. He goes to a separate lab because he's got a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. But he gets into his lab, right? That's the end of episode one. Episode two, Dr. Machina has gone into his lab and he revives one of his most loyal servants, Homunculus. Who is this big green dude? Revives. So he's like in a pod, like yeah. frozen in stasis well, or something. Well, he's a he's like a human level intellect creature that uh, Doctor Machina grew out of various funguses and plants and brought okay. to life using mad science. And so he's kind of like this weird Frank, ha like half Frankenstein plant monster, but he looks like a normal dude who's just got like green skin. And he's like seven feet tall and completely naked all the time. So oh. they, it's just maybe there's a, a running gag of him just like bursting through all of his clothes. And so he has to get more and more mm. ridiculous clothes as the, as the show continues. You know, he's wearing like a normal overcoat and like a, a, a hat, you know, like the Ninja Turtles would wear when they wanted to stay incognito. But by the end of the series, or he's like just a thing. Yeah. Being fantastic for. Yeah. But by the end of the series, he's just wearing like go-go shorts and like a mesh tank top because nothing else. He can't get anything yeah. else. But he's, he got some spandex. Yeah. He, he's a he's a very loyal servant of Dr. Machina. He, he worked with him for years. And then when Dr. Machina went out of the crime fighting or crime committing business, he froze homunculus thinking that he would never have to awaken him again but now now he has a mission to 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 get into so he has woken him up yeah uh and together homunculus and dr machina begin putting together the mystery of of professor neuron's disappearance and decide that the only place they can really start to investigate is the crime scene who would have thought and so they get into professor machina's evil car his evil, you know, flying car or whatever that he has, because he's a supervillain. And they fly over to his house in Montana, Professor Neurons. Is it called La Machina? Ooh, that would be good. That's that's the car in Italian. His name's Dr. Yeah. Machina. I took the name, by the so, way, from Deus Ex Machina. Deus Ex Machina. Yeah, yeah I, I, I could tell immediately. Good. I'm glad someone could, because I was It'd like, be funny if it, it wasn't, you didn't mean like that, and it, you meant like the car. Like Yeah, the car. <laughs> His, that's his that super villain alter the ego. Car, the, the, the latest Arctic Monkeys album for the kids at home. Yeah. Kids is a bit generous. For the mid-30s people at home, Arctic Monkeys, <laughs> your favorite band. <laughs> I'm not in mid-30s. I know. Yet. You might be one day. Yet. But they get... Well, yeah, that's that's the, that's the case for everyone that's, that's below their mid-30s. Yeah. And alive. Uh, they get to Professor Neuron's house and they find that he has like kind of a, a pseudo museum in his house. He has one room that has like all these exhibits dedicated to his most dangerous foes. So obviously the Necroconjurer Ooh. has his own like little shrine situation. There are a bunch of other ones we can have fun uh, determining. He's got a giant what, penny. You know, what all of them. But Dr. Machina is again, he's heartbroken. It's really, it, you know, you could see that the TV show not referring to him as Professor Neuron's greatest enemy got to him a little bit, but this, this is really getting to him because there is not a single mention of Dr. Machina in the entire house. Like, in this entire trophy room, there's... It's like ripping it apart, trying to find Yeah, him. no, uh, you know, none of his, you know, weapons or armors from all their dozens of battles throughout the decades and he's like really angry about it and he starts uh you know he's ripping apart the room and then the he and homunculus realize that it's like you know i i, I i'm gonna find this guy i have to prove that i'm better than all of these people who haven't found him so i have to find him and so they start doing the uh the investigating and they find a dna sample a little blood splatter from one captain killer Oh. A superhero who has been dead for decades. Hmm. What? Dun dun dun. And then we just check in on Professor Neuron, and he's working on the the THP with all the other scientists, and he's you know talking to them because he's a a nice affable scientist. 
And so he's like getting the lowdown. He's figuring out like, oh, all these guards, they never take their masks off. They're always wearing like all black ski masks and everything. And they're all the exact same height. Huh, is that weird? We never see them like sleep or eat. None of them even smoke. Are they clones or robots? That's mm, the question. That is the question. <laughs> clones or robots or maybe both. Um, and then he can't be a clone and a robot. Charles. Well, you can in this universe because that's. I guess you could be an android or a cyborg. Well, it's the the thing about cloning in this universe is that it hasn't been fully fix, figured out yet. So whenever you clone somebody, you get their body physically perfectly fine, but their brain is basically mush. And so all of these clones, because you you figured it out early. All the clones no. on the island. Well, you didn't. You didn't have to reveal it. <laughs> no, it's fine. The, all the clones on the island are basically being controlled via like a wireless thing that they have implanted in their brain, which is you know telling them mm. what to do, right? And so we. So they are clone robots. They are Damn. clone robots. You, yeah. Uh, so we cut back to Doctor Machina. He he is tracked down he's gone back to his base and he's tracked down all of captain killer's last known like associates and relatives right and that's how yep. episode two ends episode three uh they they track down captain killer's uh family and they go into his house and they're like you know trying to talk to him and it's a little strange because everybody has been kind of wary of homunculus because he's seven feet tall and green but these yeah. people don't really seem to care or even really notice that Homunculus is a giant green man or that Captain Machina is, you know, he's suited up at this point. He's in full supervillain garb, right? Yeah. Like, in terms of just visually, Dr. Machina mm -hmm. has a bunch of, like, spikes coming out of his suits and it's all, like, robotics and stuff. And Professor Neuron is, like, a clean-cut scientist type. He wears, like... Uh, a, a lab coat, you know, and he's got like the goggles that sci that scientists in, in comic books wear, right? And he's, yeah. you know, that's that's kind of their visual. They they go against each other because Professor Neuron, he's wearing all white. Doctor Machina wearing all like gray and black and steel colored things, right? But you know, they figured it out. So Doctor Machina and Homunculus are walking around this house and they're they're talking to Captain Killer's family and they don't really they're they're kind of off and professor or dr machina is like you know what he turns on like a special device he has on his belt that uh affects all holographic wavelengths and he figures out that well these none of these people are real they're all holograms oh. and there's actually a secret bunker underneath of this suburban household oh no that is holding captain killer Oh, he wasn't geez. actually killed in his final, you know, enormous battle. He was just really severely injured. And he was mm -hmm. put down here by the Protectorate, a secret organization oh. that is, you know, a, a shadowy organization that's kind of running the things, running things beyond, behind the scenes. And so Captain oh. Killer, obviously, he couldn't have gone in there and kidnapped professor neuron so they are trying to get yeah. information out of him but he's like a 95 year old man and he's hooked up to all these tubes and everything and he like kind of mm -hmm. just he he he's really out of it for most of it and he, he points them over to the security tapes and they see uh you know two weeks ago you know two weeks prior uh a slim looking person in all black breaks into captain killer's house you know disables the holograms like nobody's business and then takes a big vial of his blood and then runs out Yo. and they're like well oh, what was that all black just like our current villain mm. Mm. Ooh. Mm. and then they find a little Mr. note Rocket. from the protectorate on his thing on you know in his house so they're like well we're gonna go talk to the protectorate because they obviously know what's that is on there they know what's going on, they, and they have a secret base in New York City, on, in the sewers, so let's go down there and find it. And so they, uh, Dr. Machina and Homunculus, feeling pretty proud of themselves, because they, they got it, they figured it out. They leave the, the house, and there are about 20 armed guards standing outside of the house, all head to toe covered in black. And this is the first real super villain fight of the series, you know? 
We've kind of, we, we weren't really sure of Dr. Machina if he really still has it, you know, up until this point. Because he's an old man. But then mm-hmm. him and Homunculus just start fucking tearing through these guys. Homunculus is picking guys Full up. Full sci-fi and, madness. Exactly. He's picking guys up by, like, the, the legs and just beating the other ones with them. And he's, like, ripping dudes in half. And it's all blood and stuff. They're, like, it's definitely a guys that they're killing. Right? Uh, Dr. Machina shooting them with all sorts of, like, freeze guns and lasers and fire fl- fire guns and all this stuff. And he's like, oh, my God. This is badass. I feel like I'm 20 again. You know? One of them gets a good hit on him. And he's like, oh, I, I, feel, oh. Like I'm, I feel like I'm 40. <laughs> Uh, but they eventually yeah. come out on top, and then, you know, just because he can, Homunculus steps on one of the guy's heads and absolutely crushes it. And that's when you see all the little servos it's and, vit, 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 you know, robotic things that are going on, which, again, have protectorate symbols on the chips. And so they're like, well, then the protectorate is definitely yeah. behind this. Let's go, you know, find them end of episode three episode three is really very much not a professor neuron heavy episode but that all changes in episode four and five episode four starts protector uh professor neuron has finished his work on his uh project on his uh on the trojan horse project and he's decided you know i've done this i've met all of these scientists maybe we we give him a little buddy you know one of the scientists is his little friend and he's like you know, we'll, we'll be good. We're, we're buddies. And he's like, well, I can't just stand by and let this villain use this technology I've created for evil. We're going to hold a revolt. So Professor Neuron oh. begins, like, arming these scientists, like, with sort of... Like, you, you remember the scene in Iron Man 1 when Iron Man is, like, building his Iron Man suit and he's got all sorts... In the, in the cave. And he's got all sorts of, like, cave. put together, you know, robotic stuff, right? It's like yeah. that, but instead of one Iron Man suit, it's a bunch of different, like, parts of an Iron Man suit on a bunch of nerds. <laughs> yeah, bunch everyone's of, getting little Iron Man gauntlets and yeah, what, leg booster things. Maybe, like, helmets. two of them get gauntlets, two of them get leg things, two of them get, like, eye lasers... You know, something like that. I, I, yeah, like it's like it covers like half their face. Yeah, that would be cool, because they only have so much material they can work with, and so we do like a big. They, there's like a big. They're building up to it. They're they're suiting up. They're getting all the things. You know, and Professor Neuron he gives them this really big talk. They're like, oh yeah, we're gonna do this and this and this and this. And they're like, yeah, let's do it. We're gonna hold a revolt. We're gonna win back our freedom. We're gonna protect our family from this monster. And just as, you know, they get, he gets them all riled up, just as, you know, he finishes his speech, the door bursts open, and like 50 of the guys walk in, and 50 of the clone robot things walk in, and he's like, all right, boys, let's get down to it. Cracks his knuckles. There's gonna be a fight. Cut to Dr. Machina is, uh, has infiltrated the Protectorate HQ because he's just that damn good. He's back. He's got his mojo back after killing all those 20 men, and he's feeling real good yeah. about himself. So he's infiltrated, and I want this to be kind of like a Court of Owls spoof. You know, they're all a bunch of rich people in their masks, and mm-hmm. they're and they're holding a big court talking about things, you know? But it's all really inconsequential stuff, because in reality, rich people seem to get really angry about inconsequential stuff, you know? Like owning a social media service for no reason. Just, just, just yeah. pulled that example right out of my head. No person cool. in mind that I, I'm considering. Um, Thinking of, yeah. He gets in there, and you know, obviously they're a super secret organization, so they've got huge goons. You know, those organizations yeah. always have goons that are like not medium-sized goons. Yeah, they they huge goons. They've got huge goons, and and pr- Doctor Machina and, and uh. Uh, homunculus have to fight these goons it's a big bloody fight and we're you know intercutting the fight of Dr. Machina in with the fight of Professor Neuron and the scientists versus the guards and it looks like Professor Neuron's gonna win at the beginning it looks like Machina's gonna lose to these goons but eventually throughout the fight you see that 
Dr. Machina, he's using his his underhanded tactics and his his slimy nature to get the upper hand and defeat these goons while his Mach- yeah. uh, Neuron, he's, you know, they're slowly losing. He, he can't stand to watch these scientists get mowed down because of his hubris, right? And he's like, well, should we have even fight in the first place? And that's when the 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 his buddy professor neurons one scientist buddy knocks him out he's been betrayed dun 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 betrayal Whoa. uh and then we cut no more professor neuron for this episode because after dr machina and homunculus beat the big goons and they like rip their heads off and crush them and you know all this stuff because they're super villains uh the protectorate are cowardly and scared and they're like uh what what do you what do you want and it was like what have you done with Neur- neuron and we're like we don't we don't have neuron where is he ah uh, uh, oh please don't hurt us where is he he's here where is he? we 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 didn't want to deal with whoever has him they asked for uh equipment we gave it to him it was better than the alternative what was the alternative and they just you know look over and there's a, a gravestone for one of their members they're like inside the yeah that because not facility. a gravestone it's like a, a you know they have they have a big wall that's full of uh all the uh heads the, the headstones not headstones but it's you know what i mean what? plaque Plaques? plaque i meant to say plaque there's a little plaque with their dead scientists Fuck it. in the middle of the office in the fucking break room there's just a big headstone yeah you're like, well, that's Jerry. That's Jerry. He's dead. For now. Nope. Buried him. <laughs> we buried him. <laughs> buried him as he lived in the break in room. In the break room. Away from his family. And the the protectorate are scared shitless. And they and ba- his work. And they just, he, 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 did, he just sat here and ate his lunch. He sat here, ate his lunch. And then we poisoned him. Now he's dead. Yep. What are you going <laughs> to do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they give him the coordinates to the island that they've been sending all of this equipment to and you know he's like fine you fucking cowards I was hoping for a real fight and then he just shoots one of them just for fun because again he's an evil evil dude Uh, and so he and homunculus get in their enormous flying machine which maybe it can be the car the La Machina uh, can also be it transforms yeah. into like a, a super plane, right? Because he's an evil scientist, and he flies off to the scientists, to the island, and that's the end of episode four. And episode five, our final episode. Can you believe it's it's only been five episodes, and we've done so much. Yeah. So we we start with uh, Professor Neuron. He's he's being held down. He's got a bunch of the clones all have their their guns to the backs of his head, and it's been revealed at this point that they're clones. They're they're you know clones of Captain Killer with robotics in their head. And we slowly reveal who who has been this the villain that's been uh, doing this whole thing. Who's who's kidnapped all these scientists and is building this crazy it's it's, uh it's captain weird the space hero of tomorrow oh i was thinking about i was almost gonna make it captain weird space hero of tomorrow if i'm or it's dr page and bear man no it's actually dr machina's uh daughter oh my god it's her it's his daughter that he didn't know he had because again bad guy he's just been getting people pregnant all over the world for decades um yeah so all the scientists are lined up and they're being one by one shot in the head and Professor Neuron is last because, you know, obviously Samantha Machina is, she, she has a bit of a, a, a love-hate relationship with uh, Professor Neuron because obviously she hates him because she's, he's her father's arch nemesis. But also she likes seeing her yeah. father get punched in the face because he's a piece of shit. So, you know. It's a, it's a love-hate thing. So she's going to execute him last. So just as the last scientist gets a bullet put to their brain and a, and a, the gun is placed at the back of Professor Neuron's head, crash through the window, homunculus and uh, Dr. Machina jump through, and they, they begin just killing all these guards. They're just being real badasses about it, smashing yeah. dudes, ripping heads off, you know, that sort of thing. And it's kind of fucking with Samantha's plan. And Machina is like, 
I want him to be surprised, but not shocked. Does that make sense? Like, he's like, oh, yeah. I didn't expect to see you here. Oh, you're doing the evil scheme? Yeah, I guess that tracks. <laughs> like, that makes sense. It makes sense. You're evil like your father, your and, you know, you also hate this guy because he's a real prick. So self-righteous. And Professor Neuron is like, I'm right here. It's like, shut up, idiot. You know, and this is the... I'm a great guy, really. Yeah. This is the... I just want to finish my screenplay. <laughs> just... just... I just try to work on my screenplay a bit. It's about two friends who build a house together. Um, yeah, but they, they, there's a bit of a confrontation between, between Professor Neuron and uh, Samantha Machina and Dr. Machina, and he's like, yeah, well, homunculus, go get him. And he starts barreling towards Samantha to, you know, take her down. Not kill her, but, you know, stop her as he helps Professor Neuron up. And then that's when Samantha reveals that she has also been tinkering with with a, a little bit of science, and she's created the quote-unquote perfect clone of Captain Killer. Yo. This being who's had every ounce of his killer instinct turned up to 11 and every piece of his personality taken away, and he's like this big monstrous, you know, all fucking ugly and stuff. And it's like, yes, I was, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've created millions of these things that I've held in a pocket dimension that your buddy Professor Neuron's been working on for me. And I'm going to infiltrate the UN and re release all of these monsters onto the world's leaders. And then I will oh, no. be the world leader. I'll be in charge of all of it. Yeah. And Just screw you, dad. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, okay. And Professor Neurons is like, no! It mirrors, it, maybe it mirrors his, like, old plan with, like, building a billion homunculuses. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. And it's like, that's exactly what I was gonna do. And then uh, Professor, Ma Dr. Machina is like, oh, yeah, that's a pretty good plan. Uh, Professor Neurons, you fiend! We must stop you! And then that's when no. Homunculus begins having this all-out fight with um, the perfect clone. And it's Lee, and just as you know, in the in the fight, uh, Samantha Machina, she she escapes because that's what she that's what supervillains do, and she also sets yeah. the, sets the self destruct off on the island, so it's all going to be no, in no. the bottom of the ocean pretty Boom. soon. And so yeah. Machina is like, we have to get out of here. Monculus is like, no, I can't. I have to stop him. I I can't. I if if I stop fighting him, he'll get you. You won't be able to get away. And so Homunculus oh, no. sacrifices himself so that Dr. Machina and Professor Neuron could live. Aww. And it's, it's, a, it's kind of a somber moment. And, and it's maybe the mm -hmm. first time we see Dr. Machina be kind of a little sad. You know? Yeah. But when Professor Neuron asks him about it, he's like, I'll build another one. It's fine. You know, he, he, he throws it off. But he is, he is sad. We can see it. He's sad about it. Maybe he has like a scrap of him left because he's like a plant man, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe and we could do like a Groot sort of thing. He's got his ear. You know. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, you can like regrow him like Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, and so uh, Professor Neuron and Doctor Machina they fly back to Professor Neuron's house. You know, in the Midwest, uh, yeah. per Professor Neuron's you know request, because he's like, I need to get you know my my superhero equipment so we can stop your daughter from destroying the UN. Mm -hmm. And. They get there, and Dr. Machina, you know, he has a kind of a tense confrontation with him in the trophy room with Professor Except Neuron. He doesn't have any, He's like, any stuff. He's where, like, where, where's my, you know, where's my display? You know, it, it, he's like, he gets really, he goes on this big long rant about how you never appreciated our relationship, our nemesis dynamic. <laughs> you, you are just another hero. I was your great, I was your arch enemy. And, you know... Professor Neuron kind of looks up at him, a little bewildered and shocked, but not, like, saddened. And then he goes up and he puts his hand on a seemingly normal part of the wall. And it reveals that it's actually a, a, a handprint reader. And it moves away, and there's an entire second room dedicated solely to Dr. Machina and his, his exploits as a villain. And their battles. Yeah, and all, all this stuff. And Dr. Machina, he's like... You know, you see him teary-eyed a little bit. And then Professor Neuron is like, I always respected our rivalry. Professor, or Dr. Machina is like, good. I did too. Professor Neuron. We have to, now, come on, let's go down to the basement. We can get our equipment and stop your daughter. 
and he turns around, and just as he's walking down to the basement, uh, Dr. Machina puts two into the back of his head. What? Because he's a supervillain. Dr. Machina said, I will be the only person who can kill Professor Neuron. And he realizes now that Professor Neuron did respect their relationship, and so he's fulfilled. And he shoots him in the back of the head twice. Kills him. Damn. Just straight out. And then he does like a maniacal cackling laugh for about a minute. And he's, ha 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 ha. That's funny. Uh. Cut to. Damn. He's sitting in the, he's sitting in the um, home. He's back at the home, just sitting, watching TV, watching uh, a live news feed as uh, the new Dr. Machina is, be is attacking the UN. And another superhero we haven't heard up until this point comes in and saves the day. And the cycle keep and the and the you know the clock keeps on a turning. The cycle starts over and over again, and it just keeps okay. on a going. Here's a here's an idea: the new superhero, right? Mm -hmm. We get like a tag because I assume that's the end of the episode. Yeah, right? and then click. Okay, we get like a tag, and the 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 tag is like the new superhero is the son of Doctor Neuron. Yeah, and he like ran down to his father's like uh superhero lair and he like grabs him and he's crying over his body he's like dad i will avenge you and he looks at the tv and it's like it must have been you know this person because like blah 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 yeah goes out and he's that avenged. would be good i i didn't even think about the son daughter the the yeah but yeah it's professor neuron son he finds him he's like he just wanted to work on his screenplay <laughs> Maybe we can have a scene in the And then there's a tag to the tag, which is the the son going back and finishing the screenplay for his dad. Yeah. And it gets released as a movie, and it's terrible. Because <laughs> I do want it <laughs> but to... it does really well, because it's, you know, it's it's the, written by a famous superhero. Yeah. Too famous. Maybe superheroes. the tag to the tag is Dr. Machina seeing it with, yeah. like, baby... Um, baby homunculus yeah and he's like look that's he's, you he's like regrowing it he's like he's like wow this is this is it's terrible this is God but, awful. i mean it's it's made like over a billion dollars oh, jesus people just watch anything these days yeah click end of show i also would like there to be a joke in the second episode where uh Dr. Machina is in Professor Neuron's house. He starts flipping through the screenplay. He's like, oh my god, this is shit. He starts the thing with the main character waking up and getting out of bed. How cliche. Because if you remember, that's how episode one starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> Dr. Machina waking up and getting out of bed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the end. That's the end of the show. I liked it. That was fun. Two and what, was, what was the name again? Uh, Negotiating Nemesis. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I I, I kind of thought of the title last. I couldn't think of a good one. Sinister Senile. Ah, that's it. There it is. That you found it. You found the title. Good job. Yeah. Well, thank you all for listening to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I've been your host, <laughs> Charles Long. With me as always, by my co-host, editor, producer, co co Jacoby Smith. I don't know what the fuck is going on with me right now. Uh, Jacoby Smith. Jacoby Smith. Jacoby Myers, the wide receiver for the uh, Patriots. Oh, for the Patriots. Ew. Nobody likes the Patriots, except for Patriots fans. And you want to know the one thing people dislike more than they dislike the Patriots? Us. Patriots fans. Everyone hates Patriots fans. Uh, thank you all for listening, and remember to tell everyone you meet about this podcast. Yep, everyone. Everyone. Guy at the store, old lady, neighbor. I I, um, I have a job as a waiter. I tell literally all of the people I wait on to listen to the Very Reasonable Pilots podcast. Yep. Uh, I shove flyers into mailboxes. All right, everyone. Yep. Have a good day. And remember, <laughs> Jake loves you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's the apps. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye.